Thank you so much for attending today's webinar on submitting your application and e-grant. This is required for the notice of funding opportunity. Hello, and thank you for learning with us today. My name is Deborah Trishan. I'm the program officer for AmeriCorps Seniors. It is always a pleasure to host webinars like this. Today, I'm joined by my colleagues, Kaylin, or Callan Evans and Emily Flanagan. You'll see them in the Q&A pod, but I want to take the opportunity on behalf of AmeriCorps Seniors team to welcome you to the AmeriCorps Seniors American Rescue Demonstration Program and AmeriCorps Seniors Foster Grandparents and Senior Companion Replacement Opportunity. So we have these two opportunities going on at the same time. It is an opportunity available right now, and I'm excited about these opportunities because it's a great time to expand and meet the needs of our community. I do want to share some more preliminaries with you. Um, we've mentioned adding your questions to the Q&A pod. Um, I do really want to hit that home. If you have any particular questions as we go through the webinar, please submit those in the Q&A. That helps us track all the questions that come in, answer the most common, and in the event that we can't get through all of them, we will have your email and a way to contact you back. It also helps us as we add to our FAQs if needed. If by chance we don't get to your question or you've processed what you learned today, um, please feel free to also email either the American Rescue SDP at cncs.gov for any American Rescue um, Standard Demonstration Program questions or the 2022 FGP SDP replacement at cncs.gov for the Foster Grandparent and Senior Compl Companion Replacement Opportunities. Um, the opportunity of funding pages have all the information you need to submit a successful application, and those have been added to the chat box. This is um, one in a series of six webinars that will be provided to help you through the process. All recordings will be posted on each opportunity funding page a week from the recording. Again, all sessions are being recorded and will be posted on the opportunity of funding pages. Also, a small note. Today we're reviewing how to submit your application and grants. I do recommend that you review this list. And if you have any specific questions related to what is an FGP, Foster Grandparent Program Senior Companion, or you wanna learn more about the American Rescue Opportunity, we have specific webinars for those. We have some polls for you to answer some questions so we can get to know you. The first one, how well do you know AmeriCorps seniors, formerly known as Senior Corps? I'll give you a couple seconds to answer that question. Okay. So it looks like we have some Brand new folks, welcome. So happy that you're here and some fairly new and some experienced folks on this call. Thank you so much. All right, our next question. How did you hear about us? Give you a couple minutes to respond or a couple seconds to respond to that one. And thank you guys so much for participating. Good, a couple more seconds. All right, I'm gonna end it. It looks like the most common is our emails. I'm glad that our emails are working um, and that you have your networks working as well to share information about our program, great. And next question. How would you describe the primary field of your organization? Are you an aging, volunteerism, community development, faith-based, higher education, state, county, municipal, or local governments, or something else. Okay. All right, 
So it looks like we have a pretty good range, aging, volunteerism, community development. Curious about that something else, but it uh, looks good. Thank you all for coming, bringing your expertise. All right, our next question. Are you interested in applying for one or more of the following opportunities? So as a reminder, we have the foster grandparents and senior companion replacement opportunity. Um, that it's its own, they both have their own notice of funding opportunity. And then we also have the American Rescue um, Senior Demonstration Program that is also open currently. You could be applying for one of them or multiple of them. Um, a lot of you are here for the American Rescue Senior Demonstration Program. Great. Um, it's encouraging to see some of you are interested in applying for multiple applications. And looks good for the Senior Companion Foster Grandparent. Great. Thank you, guys. For our content here today, we will go over some opportunity basics and we will do a quick, uh, we'll do this quickly, but we will primarily focus on entering your application. We will shift the focus today's webinar to the electric grant management system called eGrants. Um, we AmeriCorps seniors are currently accepting applications for the AmeriCorps seniors American Rescue um, senior Demonstration Program and the American Seniors Foster Grandparent and Senior Companion Replacement Opportunity. Um, and you can go into our system and begin your application or submit an application at any time between now and February 3rd by 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. On the screen right now is a screenshot of the American Rescue Demonstration Program and this, uh, sorry, we had updated our slides. The Appendix A for the American Senior um, Rescue Demonstration Plan. From this, you can see that it lists the states that may have one or more priority area. This is low vaccination rates, um, counties with high to extreme poverty levels, and veteran services and engagement. Applicants are not limited to the states and counties on Appendix A. You may apply for a county you feel meets the priorities of the American Rescue SDP. AmeriCorps Seniors is placing priority on this list of Appendix A. But again, for this opportunity, you can apply for counties that are outside of this appendix. Let's look at the Foster Grandparent and Senior Companion Replacement Opportunity Appendix A. On the Foster Grandparent Replacement and the Senior Companion Replacement Appendix A are the counties up for awards. All applicants must apply for an area listed on one of these Appendix A's due to it is a replacement opportunity. So again, the difference between the American Rescue Plan is you must follow this Appendix A and submit an application that has at least one of the counties as listed. One of the many resources that you will use, many of your first questions are likely along the line of what you are seeing on the screen right now. How long is the award? What is the review process? Are any match requirements? What information should I include in my application? What kinds of projects AmeriCorps is hoping to fund? To AmeriCorps is hoping to fund? The vast majority of these answers to these questions are actually included in a document that is called the Notice of Funding Opportunity. This is our gateway to the opportunity. The notice um, is your map to the opportunity. That means all of the information that you need will either be available in this document or linked in the document of the notice of funding opportunity. The notice of funding opportunity can be referred to as the NOFO, the NOFA, or the notice. So as you're working through different documents, you may see it referred to a little bit differently, but they're all the same. Um, this is where you want to start. Read it, know it upside and down and backwards. It is a very critical document. We are adding to the chart the two opportunities of funding pages that 
has the notice of funding information. So we've added those links to the chat box. Um, so we showed, showed both of those. So again, uh, whether you're applying for the American Rescue Plan, you have your own funding of all opportunity page and your own notice. And if you're applying for foster grandparents or senior companion, those are on the same funding opportunity page, but they both have their own individual notice that you'd want to read independently. Moving forward. One more slide forward. Here are some resources to get you through the application process. In addition to the NOFA or notice, there are other resources that are very important for you. First, Appendix A, which I've already referred to, and it's a list of available opportunities. Please remember that if you are applying for American Rescue Plan, the SDP project, you can apply for counties not listed on Appendix A. But if you are applying for the foster grandparent or senior companion, you must apply for an area as listed on Appendix A. Again, refer to your notice. We also have the Appendix B, which explains our national performance measures in depth. We offer a specific webinar on this topic that goes more in depth on the national performance measures and how they will apply to the, to the program that you're interested in. Uh, we will cover that more in detail in future webinars. We also have Appendix C. It's helpful to review when learning all of the terms and definitions used by AmeriCorps and AmeriCorps Senior Program. So if you're ever what was a VSY, a volunteer service year? That is a great place to go to. There is also the grant application instructions. It's a step-by-step -step guide to navigate our electronic grants management system, eGrants. And within that document, we also have the work plan development worksheet, which will be very helpful when you're trying to think about how you plan your activities and how you can communicate your plans to AmeriCorps seniors. Again, that is located in the grant application instructions. And then finally, we have the frequently asked questions that we update as questions come in that are most common. And remember, we use the email boxes American Rescue SDP at cncs.gov and also the 2022 FGP SDP replacement at cncs.gov for additional questions. Moving into eGrants key tools and tips. Um, we have the preliminaries out of the way. Now we want to start to think of our key tools and tips for using eGrants. eGrants is our electronic grant system. As I've mentioned, it helps us get information in a standardized way so you can use that to aggregate things. Uh, it makes it easy and quick to get results back. It is a technological system and that likely any technology system, you need to keep a few things in mind when using it. I know we have some folks in here that have used the system before, um, but we have a majority that haven't. So I'm hoping that our OGs on the call will be helpful and put into the chat box any tips and tricks that you have used to help you navigate and enter information into eGrants. Um, which one of you have any thoughts on what is helpful when working in the system? Go ahead in the chat, um, put some suggestions in. Anybody? I just swear there was at least nine. Okay, that's okay. Oh, don't wait until the last minute. Thank you, Don. Yes, don't wait until the last minute. That's a good one. Anyone else? Okay. Work with others. That's a good suggestion. Work within your agency. Okay, I'm gonna share some of my tips. Uh, use Word document is definitely going to be one of them. Save often, save often in the system. Those are very true and it's the most 
um, mostly important thing that you can do. Do your work in a word processing application that can be WordPerfect, Google Docs, uh, Microsoft Word, whatever you use to type out your documentation and then cut and paste into eGrants. eGrants is not a great composition tool. It is better for capturing and passing along information and moving it forward. The help desk is your friend. Uh, there is a hotline and a technical, if you have a technical issue, the help desk is your friend and information to contact there is all listed. Um, I think you hit the major points of making sure you don't wait until the last minute using Word and things like that to cut and paste. But again, the help desk is your friend. Um, prepare to submit your application well in advance. You guys hit that one first and foremost. That is important. Prepare to submit your application in advance of the deadline. Um, we usually recommend trying to do that 10 days in advance. Um, again, because it's an electronic system, sometimes things happen um, that may hold up the system or maybe a button got clicked or something got jumbled as you were processing. Also, life happens. So if you can have the deadline earlier, then the most likely you are to get it submitted. Um, that also goes hand in hand um, with submitting on time. And let's say you did come across something and it's February 3rd at 425 and you call the help desk and they're already addressing 20 other people. It really pushes the, the deadline, um, makes things very stressful. Um, so again, try to submit it early. Um, the next one goes along with the first one. There is a work development plan worksheet you can use to um, plan out the national performance measures. We talked about that in one of the previous webinars. If you had attended um, the national performance measures, um, we also have those coming in the future as well as repeats. Um, there is a template that you can use um, to write out your goals um, based on using the, using the Appendix B national performance measures. Um, to help you with that. Before, before submitting your application, print it from eGrants if possible. There is a 15 page limit. How you will know the actual pages of your application as it is by printing it out from the electronic grant system itself. That is how long you, that's how you will know how long your actual application is. Do it before you submit it. Finally, if you have problems, use the National Service Hotline. Um, that is so important and I will take a second and navigate to where the contact information is. I do not have that. Let me get that for you guys. Actually, uh, Emily, do you mind pulling that contact and putting it into the chat box for us? Sorry. Uh, we'll get that for you guys and put it in the chat. When it comes to technical issues, um, such as if you're a little confused about the notice um, or needed information from the webinar or things like that, you can email the American Rescue SCP at cncs.gov, or if you're applying for the Foster Grandparent or Senior Companion Program, use that 2022 FGP SCP replacement email box. Um, it is not the best place, it is a place to submit your questions for how the programming is, but it's not a place for your technical issues with any grants. You should use the National Service Hotline. Um, you can get that contact information when submitting your application. Okay, moving into step-by-step -step walkthrough. Now that we have those tips and tricks out of the way, let's enter eGrants. This is the first screen that you will see when you try to enter eGrants. You will first create an account if you have not already. I will not go into detailed instructions on how to create your account, but there is information about it and tools that I showed you earlier with the grant application instructions. Um, you need an account before you can get to the next stage. Thank you, Emily, for putting the help desk information into the chat box for everyone. Um, we will log, log in and um, you'll see this page. This is the system we use to create a new application. And it is also the system where our grants live in. If you are a awarded an AmeriCorps ARP, American Rescue Plan SDP grant or selected for the Foster Grandparent or Senior Companion Replacement Grant application, you will come back and manage the grant in many different ways through this system. You will see all this information here. It is not just unique to AmeriCorps seniors, but all of the AmeriCorps programs use this um, application. Um, it, 
So it will also ask you for the NOFA or notice. You will follow the drop down menu and look for either the FY 2022 American Seniors ARP Senior Demonstration Project starting July or the FY 2022 American Seniors FGP or SVP replacement, and that will get you started. Um, it will take you to the screen that looks like this. If you look at the left, um, this is the outline of everything that you will need to submit. On the left, you will have the outline of all the information that you will need to submit for your application. It also is very similar to the notice. Um, it is automatically populated based on the NOFA or the notice of information, and it will pull the account you created, and you'll want to make sure it is all correct. We will circle back at the end of the process and talk about authorized representatives. We will work our way through this outline. It is going to start with your narrative. You can see that narrative section has a number of subsections. Um, in the chat, how should I learn what I should put in each subsection? Where might I go? Um, where might I find that information of what AmeriCorps seniors is looking for in each subsection? So in the chat, where would I find out for each notice or for each narrative um, what is required? Click on the items of the list. Okay, it's a good idea. Any other ideas of where you would find what you need to submit in the narrative? The NOFO. That is correct, guys. You're going to use your notice. Because if you'll notice in the NOFO in the criteria section, we have listed out all of the different sections and what is required. So generally in e-grants, what you have is a standard system. And then as we create the notice, we specify what might go into those sections. So each application may not be similar in what's being asked in each narrative. Um, you can also use the grant application instructions to help you walk through, but within that, it's always going to refer you back to the notice. So thank you, Cassie and Wendy, for your responses. Okay. We hope you will attend on and or watch the performance webinar um, where we review how they are important about this application. Um, this is where you'll tell us what you are going to do, project-specific outputs, and outcome targets and tell us how many unduplicated volunteers or volunteer service years you are going to involve in each activity to give us a sense of the scope of your work. This is structured into the build more than written. Um, it lets us um, let's see what that looks like. When you enter the work plan section, this is what you'll see. It will be a blank and you'll need to click on begin to get started. Once you get started, you will have the opportunity to build things out. The first thing you'll uh, need to do is select objectives and focus area. When you attend the performance webinar, you will learn more about the focus area are and um, what they, how they must match the primary focus activities. Within each focus area, there are more specific objectives. What we see here, like education, is the focus area and the objectives appear underneath that. This is a waterfall menu. When you click on one of the titles, you will see the objectives. We don't see healthy features or the objectives underneath healthy features because we have not clicked on it. If we did, we would see those. This is a great place to point out how important it is to develop your work plans before you go into eGrants by using the work plan development sheet found in the grant application instructions. I'm going to select from my objectives at the screen, and then I can come back later and add more if I want to, but this will send me on the path to get the system certain information. If I did not click everything I need, I, it will be complicated to go back. A couple of other things I will note here. This screenshot for your education focus area. For those of you applying for Healthy Futures, it will look just like this, but just have Healthy Futures marked off. Once I have done that, I can click on Next. It will take me to the, this screen. Now you will not, now you will not see anything. So you'll have at the top because it's meant to summarize what you have built. So again, when you start out and you come to the screen for the first time, it's going to be blank because you have to build out 
they have additional items. Um, one of the most common issues that we see in this stage is assuming that the size of the text box that you see on the screen indicates how much information we want. That is not the case. To understand what to put in these fields, you want to look at the grant application instruction. They give you what a complete community need definition is. Um, you want to meet the requirements and the size of the field on the screen has, has nothing to do with the amount of space that you have. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you answer all the questions and fill that in, but just because you see that square size, it does not limit you to entering more information. So you'd wanna type it out and then cut and paste it in. Okay. Uh, what you put on, um, what you put out in on one stage of the process will filter through the next screen. We have um, done is we have jumped ahead um, at this screen to simulate what it looks like when you have entered several of the fields. You will build them in the screen, providing the information here. What you are going to do after this is you will start to choose your output and outcome targets and allocate your volunteer service years, also known as a VSY for stipended programs, or unduplicated volunteers for non stipended programs. We have had to go through the screen for each one of the four work plans that you see here. Um, for this application, we have built four work plans on the last screen, and now we want to add the volunteer service years and put those outcome output, output targets. Um, I, want, I went to enter my targets, but I couldn't, it was locked. Once I changed my project total number from zero to the number of volunteer service years, or known as VSYs, I am requesting, we can allocate our targets. We have gone ahead and done that for this example as we put 100 to keep it simple. And now, now it is time to fill out the rest of the fields. Um, can anyone tell me how you would get the output and outcome target? Where um, does those come from? Where, how do you figure that out of what you want to enter as your output and outcome target? Does anybody have any ideas how you're going to approach that? Uh, would that be the number of folks, sir? Okay, it would be good. So how would you, Kathy, I'm just going to push back on that a little bit. How would you determine that for yourself? you are correct. You'd want to identify the number of you would serve. Thinking through Appendix B, that could be a great resource. Assessing community need, um, it would reflect on the scope of the narrative. So thinking through that, you want to make sure those match up absolutely. And those, and those could help. Okay, I think you guys are you thinking through it. Um, we would start off with the best guess at what you can accomplish, right? From past experiences, using resources, or researching different stations, um, expectations. Um, what are what we are looking for here as you are all on the right track of trying to figure out how to assess what is the program asking me to do? What can I actually do? Um, I may shy away from an informed guess. Um, it's more of a projection, right? You want to do a kind of research that is indicating about what we think we will achieve in a given year. You will project that doing during similar work um, and you will build off of it and or you have been working in a state, maybe you've already been partnering with other stations and other community partners, or maybe your advisory board, you've been doing the work and so you generally know how many families, how many children, um, or maybe how many are in need and then use that information to create your targets. Um, how many of you, how many do you think will experience this change in their lives as a result of that is what is the outcome target is? Then you will get to the unduplicated volunteers or volunteer service years um, VSY. Remember, for the purpose of a stipended American rescue SDP, and for the FGP, SDP, 
and senior campaign, sorry, SVP replacement application, think of VSY, volunteer service years. And then if you are doing a application for unduplicated volunteers, those would be unstipended for the American Rescue um, opportunity. For now though, we're gonna say for a VSY that we will have up to 100 in the outcome. This is also the column when talking about how many volunteer service years you must put into a national performance measure. Um, can anyone remind me of that figure? You want to divide the amount you are applying for by what? Okay, if you test, you're right. Uh, if you are applying for the American Rescue Plan, and you are doing a stipended program, you would do 7,500, okay? Any other ideas? We do have on the screen now for the American Rescue. Also, if you're doing the unduplicated volunteer, so a non-stipended program, it's $1,000 per amount you are requesting. For the FGP SVP replacement opportunity, it is a different amount, and that is 6,500 per requested amount. So again, American Rescue SVP, uh, unduplicated volunteers is $1,000 per amount that you are requesting. So if you are not gonna be providing a stipended opportunity, then you would do $1,000. If you are gonna do a stipended program, you would have $7,500 per the amount that you are requesting. And then if you are doing the replacement opportunity for either a foster grandparent or senior companion, the cost per VSY volunteer service year is 6,500. So it's $1,000 less. Um, so we have built our work plans and allocated our unduplicated volunteers or volunteer service years, VSYs, and the system will give you some, some, give you some summary charts and tables. There are, for your information only, and they are helping you to look at the information. They do not tie directly to any of our requirements. It's more just to help you. Uh, when you click on validating performance measures, that will check to make sure that you completed all of the information needed to complete this. It will not check to see how many unduplicated volunteers or VSYs you're programmed into your national performance measures though. It will not look at the community needs section and say it is complete either. It is just going to check to make sure the information is complete. Um, after you validate the performance measures, it will check to make sure everything is okay. Uh, you will then go back to the full application by clicking that button right here. Um, you have a section of the required documents and note this is like a checklist for you. You will send this the required information via the email of either American Rescue SDP at cncs.gov or the 2022 FGP SDP replacement at cncs.gov. Um, and there are detailed instructions in the notice of funding opportunity. Um, they do not update automatically, you have to go back and tell us that you have sent the information again. It is a checklist um, and we'll go through them for the instruction. So uh, you'll see a full list. Does not necessarily mean you have to submit every single document that you see on the list. Review the notice of funding opportunity. It is the key to tell you what documents are required for this application. You don't want to waste time submitting documents that are not needed. Um, for, um, I do want to review two important documents that are required for all applications. Um, the application, op the operational and financial management survey, also referred to as OFMS. It is required for all applications in these opportunities, regardless if you have a current grant or not. Some incumbents um, may have completed a financial management survey, referred to as FMS in the past. That does not count. You do need to complete the operational and financial management survey. Um, it has that extra O in front of it. Um, it is different than the old FMS um, and will not be accepted. 
The form needs to be completed in full, a response for every question. And if there is additional comments needed to explain your response, you should use the prepares comments section. I also want to note, um, and I've put a little box around it, it must be submitted in a Word document. We will not accept a PDF. Um, the Word document makes it compatible to the system that we use to pull the information into an aggregated um, system. So again, please note it must be in Word. The next document we have is the diversity questionnaire. Um, this form is in a online system. Um, you must submit your information. It covers your organizational structure and the program that you plan to apply for. Um, so you must submit that as well through the survey. Um, you get to the budget section and this is the next section of the application. The budget section is divided into two screens. Uh, a few things to point out here. To enter information, you have to add in a new budget item for some of the fields. For others, you will see they are already pre-built in. You have to um, then, you, we have been pre-built in and you just click edit. So some things you can add lines for, but some things are built in and you just click the edit button. Um, this will help you put in your budget information. There is a helpful budget compliance checklist in the application instructions to assist you in the process. I do highly recommend when you're working through it or you think you're finished, just kind of walk through that one time or a couple just to make sure you've covered everything that you need. Um, and again, I also want to recommend one of the um, trainings that we already have posted on each of the funding opportunities is the best practice in budget development um, for more information on budgeting. So do highly recommend it. Our um, Office of Grant Administration did a great job of preparing that material for all applications related to AmeriCorps seniors. So highly, highly recommend that you review that. Okay. Almost done. Finally, we get to the authorized and submit screen. I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar that the authorized representation screen is important. This needs to be completed by a person who is able to legally bind their organization to this contractually. The title of the person will vary from organization to organization. Um, it may vary, but the key thing is that it needs to be a person who has the ability to bind the organization in a legal capacity. Um, in many cases, that may not be the person who is completing the application itself. You're going to have to create a account for that as a representative um, who has their own separate account. So if you happen to be the one submitting the or preparing the application, but you have a supervisor or maybe a president or a director that has to sign off on that, they will need their own account. Um, you may want to plant that seed for them in advance as well um, so that that account can be created and ready to go when you're ready to submit the application. Um, I also want to note, we have in the FAQ, uh, one of our questions, it's uh, 4.1. How do I enter my authorized representative name in the application? They have to sign in with their own user account. They have, um, they can do that with by creating their own account. Um, I have done this um, here to the grant application instructions showing you that tool um, from earlier. You can see that the instructions um, will help you process it quickly by doing step-by-step -step to create their account. So again, refer back to the grant application instructions on how to create that account for your representative. Okay. And recap and FAQ, or just a quick, uh, yeah, and Q&A. So we're gonna also put up a uh, poll for you, um, but I will start also working through any questions you guys might have. Awesome. So while folks are responding, um, there is a question related to Appendix A. And I, um, Debbie, please correct me um, if I answer this incorrectly. For folks who are interested in applying for the American Rescue Plan AmeriCorps Senior Seaman Senior Demonstration Project, um, if your county is not listed on Appendix A, you are still eligible to apply. 
However, if you are interested in applying for the Foster Grandparent Senior Companion Program, your county must be listed in Appendix A in order for you to be eligible to apply. How'd I do, Debbie? You are on point, yep. Um, that, that is the difference between these two, uh, well, three technically opportunities. Uh, Appendix A for American Rescue is um, not as binding. You can apply for other areas. You just wanna be able to demonstrate how those areas still meet the priorities of the notice. And yes, Emily is 100% correct, FGP, SCP has to be on those appendixes because that's a replacement. Those are areas that previously over the last year had a program and had service opportunity for volunteers. And we would like to put a program back in that area to continue those opportunities for our volunteers. So great job. Thanks. We have another question related to budgets and unstipended volunteers. Um, so if you apply for $10,000 and you don't pay your volunteers, is it correct that you would need to have at least 100 unduplicated volunteers? Sorry, I'm, not, I'm a social worker, not a mathematician. So let me just do that math again. So it's $10,000 in the budget, unstipended, so, yeah, unduplicated no, I, volunteers. Thanks, Emily. Uh, so um, I think you meant to put a uh, hundred thousand um, as your funding request, and then yes, you if you're planning to do a non-stipended um, opportunity that would be not pay them stipend, you would need uh, at least one hundred unduplicated volunteers to plug into your national performance measures. Thank you. Um, we also have a couple of questions about when the webinar recording will be available and where. It will be available on our funding opportunities page, and we expect that that re recording will be available in about one week. Yeah, that's correct. We, um, so we have the amazing team that is on this call right now transcribing everything that I'm saying, <laughs> as well as what is written on the screen. Um, both in English and in Spanish. And so I've said a lot today. Uh, so they need time to prepare those documents so that we can post them on our website. So there are the two pages that you are most interested to be able to, where you registered for these trainings is where you will find the webinars. They will be, if, the, if this is the last webinar opportunity, we will close the registration and then we will add the YouTube link as well as the closed captioning in English and in Spanish so that you can access those and we come back and review them. So you will either go to the American Rescue um, SDP page, funding opportunity page for that information uh, at least a week out from today, or you'll go to the Foster Grandparent Senior Companion funding opportunity page um, and go to to this section of the technical assistance and you'll be able to see the YouTube video closed captioning both in English and in Spanish for you. So please give us at least a week <laughs> to get that out there. Thank you. And then we have one more question um, related to uh, eGrants itself. Um, if you have an executive director who will act as the legally binding signer of the agreement, when they create their account, will they have access to the applicant application that you've already put together? Or do you have to build your application again in their eGrants account? Um, so the grant application instructions will give you guidance on how to set up the representative account so that it then links to the application that has already been started and they just need to either review, if that's what they choose to do, or sign off on it. So it will be able to connect. Thank you. And then the last question that we have, um, although folks may type a few more in, is, is there a minimum number of hours each volunteer needs to contribute during the grant period? So, Sybil, that's a fun question that's 
very unique depending on what you're applying for. Um, for an unduplicated volunteer and non stipended volunteer, they have their own uh, requirements. And then for FGP, foster grandparent and senior companion, or a stipended program in the American Rescue SCP opportunities, there are a minimum number of hours that they um, can serve. And there's also a maximum number of hours that they can serve to be able to receive the stipend. Um, I'm just going to plug in a little thing. There is a minimum number of training hours that you need to do. So within the notice, we have listed out all the regulations that apply to each opportunity. So I do recommend that you, as you're working through the notice and you see a CFR um, number listed for the opportunities that you review those so that you can see all the parameters that apply. And I believe the notice also, forgive me for not having it off the top of my head, but it has that also written in it. Thank you. All right, we have responded to all the questions in the Q&A box at this stage. Um, we have a couple in the chat. Um, let me give me a moment while I scroll. Um, is the stipend amount part of the total funding request? So how much you plan to spend on stipends, I'm going to interpret that question is yes, stipend, is, stipend amount, um, the cost per hour that you will provide would be included into the total amount that you are requesting that you'll incorporate into your budget. And how much is the required stipend? Uh, per hour is $3. Fantastic. Answering the question. So those are all of the questions that I see. If I've missed your question, um, I apologize. Please add it back into the Q&A panel um, so that it pops up. Um, we have a couple more polls too, if you're still on the line and don't mind completing them. The tool um, that you can use to plan out your work plans for entering them into eGrants, which would you use? I'll go ahead and share that. All right. So the correct answer is when you're working out your work plan, your performance measures, you would use the work plan development worksheet that you find in the grant application instruction. Uh, and then our last question, um, if you have any technical issues, you should uh, attempt to solve it on your own. Uh, move on to other parts of the application and re return to it later, contact the National Service Hotline for more information. Uh, the cost per um, VSY volunteer service years for a stipended program that applies to American Rescue um, SCP, excuse me, as well as the foster grandparent and senior companion. So for the American Rescue, the cost per VSY is 7,500. For the FGP foster grandparent and SCP senior companion programs, it's 6,500 per amount that you request. Okay, and you guys are correct contact the National Service Hotline. Um, small plug, if you end up having issues and you've contacted them and they give you a ticket number and it prevents you from submitting the application by February 3rd at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you would use that ticket and submit a request for an extension. Um, it helps you request a document, hey, this is the issue that happened. I followed the process of contacting the National Service Hotline. Here's my ticket number. That could um, provide you an extension opportunity. That's great. Uh, if we have no more questions, uh, we can go ahead and give you back um, seven minutes of your day. This will be posted at least by next Tuesday on the funding opportunities page. 
Um, do we have to match any funds with this request? Uh, I highly recommend that you review the notice of funding opportunity. It does list out a match requirement depending on what application you are completing. So uh, you can even just do a quick search of um, match in the notice, a uh, word search, and it'll take you to the section that has that. Thanks, Kay. I'm glad you came. Thank you, everyone, for coming today. We really appreciate it and look forward to seeing your applications. Also, if you're applying for FGP or SCP, you get to hear me again on the 16th. So, look forward to it.